Well, we have a project right now that we're doing in the shop where we're making 12 of these rock panel molds. And uh, just give you a couple of facts here. A, this is a mold that was made in 2004, and its conditions are not ideal in my mind. They're not what I would like them to be, but this thing functions. And I remember from 4 to about 9, 2009, every day my guys were casting every rock panel we had because we were building out inventory, which this clip that I'm about to show you shows you some inventory that was in the yard. We sold rock. And um, we would produce it every day. They, they, they say that typically you can get a thousand copies out of a good mold uh, with urethane. You can get about a thousand copies. Now that differs depending on who your vendor is for rubber and what the formulation of that rubber is and the durometer and there's several factors. Not only that, how you've cared for it, how you've used it, what are the mixes in it. For instance, a sanded mix, mix that has sand or gravel in it, put in there is much more abrasive to the image of this rubber and it can only take so much and then it loses definition. At any rate, in this particular case, this is a 2004 mold. It's got two parts. Obviously the rubber, which is floppily doppily. I can bend this thing any which way and make all kinds of different formations of castings. But it just really gives us texture. That's all it's really capable of doing in, in large part. The other part of this mold is what we call a hard mold. The hard mold gives us the original formation in which we took out in nature. So it gives you the undulation. Or if you lay this rubber flat on the table, generally you lose that because the rubber's not capable of transmitting it. So it kind of flattens out. The, this is a big, uh, in, in the mold, it's a, it's a pond, okay? But in the rock, you can see that protrusion right here. This sticks out, okay? We have a negative image. We have a positive image. This is the casting from this mold. And again, this mold, uh, I just used this mold to make a mold. And in fact, the documentation of that is, here's a piece of rubber, as we applied, that was uh, 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 probably where I put a paintbrush that I was using to apply it. Just set it for a minute and came off. Here's another piece that stuck. Here's another piece. The other thing about this mold is, oh, it's ripped. Well, that's a big pain in the butt, you know. I'll show you this up close. This rip, I still use this, and I cast, but every time I do, I get that little line in here. And this right here, and I'll show you a close-up of it, this has got a defect. It's no big deal. I treat this. I knock it off with a chisel, and then I touch it up with a little paste, if it even needs that. It's not going to stop me. There's this is the rip. You know, you can see it right there. And I still use this, like I said. And you can even see the cement on the edge. Well, maybe not. But anyway, what it produces is this defect right in here. You can see the line. It's all the way right here. And it's a defect. And we'll just knock that down with a chisel. If it's really bad, we can touch it up with a little paste. But that slag that comes from mud getting in this crack, and you can actually see it. I'll bet you dollar to dollar. You can see the mud in here. Now, we use plastic. Uh, you'll see right here. I use plastic as a barrier between in here. This is the bottom one and this is the top one because there's two molds. That way I don't get cement on my mold. The rubber is clean right there. It has no cement on it. And in this case, this rubber that's here, down below here, if I could even see it, which I can't, the hard mold's not getting any rubber on it. I try and segregate the two. So when we cast this, we usually put a piece of plastic in here. Now in the beginning, we didn't. And that's why that image exists on here. But you can see the mud's gone through the crack to the back to the hard mold. And that'll create a defect. In fact, if you look down here where the piece is gone, it doesn't matter anymore, but mud's stuck on that. That's casting mud that's built up on the, on the hard mold. In other words, if the rubber was still there, the, the rubber would not lay as once it did. It's impeded by the extra ability or buildup of the mud that's down there. So that's just kind of a little, little tip there. But there's a rip over here, which has the same thing. And I can guarantee you right here, right beside it, you can see the slag. Mud gets in that crack and it produces an image. No big deal. I'll, I wouldn't throw this away because it had a couple of rips, but I will say this. I have overcome the ripping of my molds. My molds don't rip anymore, and that's part of my training that I offer is these little things that by doing a thousand plus molds, I have learned some of the little tips and trade secrets that aren't so trade secret. Anyway, this thing here on the bottom, if you'll notice, is void of about three and a half inches where that piece started ripping this way, and finally I just cut it off. It was, it was a... It was a not real efficient or effective, so I just cut it off. Now, when I just use this mold, and this is where, you know, usually, if you're going to make a, a, a rock mold, you've got two basic choices. One, you go out in nature, as we did, and you cast 
rock off of rock, real rock. Secondly, I could seal this with 100% acrylic sealer, and the reason I'm sealing it is to stop the rubber from being able to bond into the surface, so I would seal it two or three times, get it well sealed. First of all, I touch up any, any blemishes. That's the first thing, because the mold will pick up blemishes and produce those blemishes onward in every casting. So I would touch it up, I would seal it, and then I would release it, okay? And that's how I can pull and make another mold, by having a prototype. And now I'm showing you an image where the prototype has been uh, displayed to you. We have 70 of them in, this, in these photos of the rock that we originally went out in nature and casted. When we got back to the shop, we made mo uh, castings of those. So we always forevermore have at our ease the ability to make more molds without going back to the nature. Okay, so we made prototypes. And prototypes are kept around as a library piece because, if, again, you destroy this mold, you lose it, fire, whatever, you go back and you make another one. So I don't have any of my prototypes anymore. They're all gone. And I'm not even going to go into how that occurred, but it did. And that was a direct correlation to the crash, 2009. At any rate, I just made a mold of this, and you're going to see it. I'm going to show you. It's on the table there. And you can see the line here. I chose not to try and capture all this. I could come in here and put clay, and I could model that clay to where that rip would not allow the rubber. The rubber wouldn't go into the, into the rip and, and give me a hard uh, a problem or an image that I didn't want. I could fix this. I chose to have my guy stop the mold that we were making right on this black line. Same thing over here. I didn't want to pick up this little tear. So we, when we made the mold, we just respected that line that I drew on the bottom. The same way there's a little rip on the bottom. And I had the guys just not cast that area. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, and, and I've said this to a lot of my class since about 2008 when this, this idea that I had came up to me. I'd spent a lot of time out in nature extracting molds. It's not ideal. It's not factory conditions. It's, it's a hardship to try and go out and take casting uh, mold images. So I, I wanted, I had an idea and I approached my sons and I said, hey, we could make molds of our molds. And they said, no, you can't, that, that isn't going to work. And the image would look odd. You know, it's a negative. And then we, we'd get a positive and all this negative positive stuff came. And I said to him, look, you've got a geological rock formation up here. And eons and eons of years ago, a rock that was whole fell down the mountain and it cracked open. Which part is the positive? Which part is the negative? I've asked this of probably hundreds of people that were in my classes. And I used to get the deer in the headlight kind of uh, response. They didn't know. It was like a trick question. It's not a trick question. If you and I walked upon a rock, two rocks that were once together, first and foremost, we wouldn't even know they had been partners at any time. They would be separate. There would be no obvious uh, correlation to say, oh, you know, that's, those two go together. I'll bet you couldn't even figure that out. But I can assure you, if I set those two rocks before you, you wouldn't drum up the thought of, well, that one looks odd. This one looks like a rock, but this one looks odd. That must be a negative. No. When the rock breaks and we stumble upon it, they're both positive. They both look like rock. And I said this to my sons, and they, they, they wouldn't go forth with my idea. They think I'm crazy in a lot of matters anyway, but... We tried it. I was going to do it on a big rock panel that we had. And they said, no, 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 no. We're going to try it on a little four square foot rock panel mold that we had. So we did, and we did it successfully. And then we went to engage the big one, and boys, we had a problem. And it wasn't that the concept was bad. is we, at that time, weren't releasing the, the prototype with enough release agent to where the rubber would easily come off. They had a time pulling. In fact, they had two forklifts, and they put a hole in my original mold and a hole in this one to try and pull straps, to try and pull the rubber apart. We ended up ruining the new mold. We did salvage the other mold, but uh, it, didn't, it, it was almost like, see, Dad, we told you, your idea was all wet. My idea wasn't all wet, and I'm about to document to you how I took not only this mold, but six others, and I made a mold of them. I didn't go, and I've got these panels right outside the shop. I could have sealed this. I could have used that as my prototype. I'm selling that panel. It's not, I'm not going to put the sealer on it and the release agent. Now I can't sell it. I can't use it. It's no longer usable. It's got all that crap on it. You're not going to be able to put it to a, a project. I have those panels. They're for sale. I'm not going to mess it up. I'll come right back over to my original mold. I'll make a mold of that mold. I'll turn that mold over. Then I'll make another mold. I just doubled my library. That's a little trade secret that isn't a trade secret. My peers whom I've questioned and students whom I've had, nobody has ever, ever uh, uh, confided in me that uh, this is something we, we thought of. I have a way of thinking about things, and I pursue things that other people just haven't, and I'm, I, I feel very blessed in that. But anyway, I'm going to show you some of these as they're, they're all stuck together, 
and we got to demold them, and they're 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 like bonded together. But we're going to show you the molds, and then I'll take. I'm going to do this one because it's right on the end of the type table. That's why I chose this. I'm going to lay this back into it. You're going to see it fit like a glove. You're going to know I took the first mold off of that. The second mold fits into it. And the neat thing is, if if you look at this as a rock, don't think of it as a mold. This is actually the image that the the one mold will make, where this mold makes that image, and they're totally different from one another. They don't look. If this was a rock and that was a rock, they'd be two different rocks because, again, they're, naked, they're a mirror image of each other. Not one's positive, not one's negative. It's a mirror image. And that's the beauty about what I'm about to show you. You have a mold, you can make two molds. If you have two molds, you can make four and so on and so on. In other words, you can double your library of molds without ever leaving the shop and have totally different Im images. So stick with me and I'll kind of run you through it. Anyway, we're going to go now and there are... Uh, what, uh, four right here, so there's actually eight molds, okay, because I just got through molding the mold. There's a mold underneath this mold. This mold is the rubber and that hard mold, and underneath it's another rubber and a hard mold, so it's like a sandwich. There's eight molds right there, nine, ten, and then these are just singular. The back one is so flat that we didn't need to make a hard mold. The table is the hard mold. It's a very flat slate-like panel. This one here, it, there's a rubber underneath it, and then there's the rubber I just made with the hard mold. So these two are just singular molds where this is a double and these four are double. So there's 10 right here, 11, 12. We just made 12 molds for a customer. So we're going to break this one, this one right here apart, and this one is this one. And again, minus the fact that we haven't cast at all the bottom, we kind of drew a line right there, and then on the top, as I said, we drew this line so that we didn't mess with that little defect. So the, this, this, this mold right here is a wee bit smaller than the original. Still a rock panel mold, nobody's gonna know the difference. All right, so gonna try and break this apart and it's, it's stuck together. There's not a chemical bond here because I have utilized a piece of shrink wrap which I put on this rubber. This rubber was paint brushed on, mixed and paint brushed on. And when we made this hard mold, this rubber was still tacky. And if I were to put the cement right on top of it, it would be a very difficult break to get it apart. So the plastic gives me kind of a release. You could also use oil, you know, of any kind. But right now, simply trying to get some chisels underneath. And then from there, I get one of these two by fours underneath the plastic, which is still yet going to be fun. All right, come on. There we go. Now, I'm get a plug, get underneath there a little bit more. You can hear that, how it's, it's stuck. So now I should be able to flip it over. And what you're going to see is the plastic is definitely stuck to the cement. It's bonded. Fortunately, plastic isn't porous, so it'll come off. So this is the hard mold for this rubber. And it's got the undulation. That's what this picks up, is the undulation, the formation, where the rubber's only going to pick up the texture. Now, fortunately here, we had two different types of the brush-on, smooth-on rubber. Uh, this was a 35 durometer, where the lighter color was a 60. And you can see, look at the color of this. I actually had, if you can see right here, you can see the whiter and then the darker. This is 60, and I ran out of that, and I had some 35, so we continued with the 35. Just a little different color. But right now, uh, what I should do is remove the plastic. And you can hear how this is stuck. I'm just going to remove that plastic, and it's not a big deal if it's there or not. I use At any rate, now, this rubber, as again, was put on top of the mold that was below it. So we made a mold of that original panel, and you can see it's stuck. There's little uh, dribbles that we'll cut off, but right now, for the purpose of making this hard mold, I just molded the cement right over it. And now, you've got a mold that's ready to go start casting panels. And here's the original mold that we made from that original. I say, we made a mold of that first, here it is. Then I released it, and I put rubber, this rubber, paint brushed it right on top of the mold, and you can see that they fit like a glove. There's no wiggling, it captures the image. Then I made the hard mold over it. So again, there's two molds here. And then what I did do was I took the liberty of putting the mold that I first showed you, the original. I put it up on the table as opposed to it just leaning on the bench. So if I can get the camera now in a position, there's the original mold. Here's the hard mold, the piece of plastic. And again, the plastic, whether we're casting cement or we're casting rubber, 
into this mold, I put the barrier of a piece of plastic so cement or rubber won't get into this. Sometimes when you're putting rubber on, it drips over and it can bond to this and you won't get it off. So that's why we use the plastic. Now, take this mold and if I can figure out which way it goes. Let's see here. Looks like that's it right there. So you can see what we did was we put this and we rubbered it in here. And look at how that falls right in there. See that? And again, remember the rip area here? It's it was not incorporated. That line was here and on the bottom where where I did have a line, we actually went over it quite a bit. Here's the line you can see that I drew in the rubber and we exceeded it a little bit. That's okay. As I said, this has not yet been trimmed. A lot of this slag that will just pull off, we cut it with a razor knife. But again, I made this original. This rubber came from my original mold. I just molded the mold. Then I turned it over in the hard mold, which is right here. This is the hard mold, and notice the plastic on it. But underneath here, you can see the mold, the hard mold that fits this particular rubber. Let's see if I got this right now. This looks like this. See? And then, again, I released that. I made this rubber in it. And I've got now two molds from the one. Mirror image. Again, this hard mold goes on top of that. So I've got two separate molds here from the original one mold. I have doubled my image successfully. Now, the neat thing about this is if we take this rubber and we go over to the original casting that comes from the original mold. Let's see if I've got that there. Okay. Now let's take the first mold that we did from the actual. And you should see that this rubber, which is a mold, is the exact image of this. You can see this line right here. Here it is here. This is the exact copy. Instead of casting a panel, I casted a mold. There you go. Two same images. This is now a mold which will produce the opposite of this. This image isn't capable of producing that image. This image produces the mirror image of this. So it's an exact opposite. Hope not to have confused anybody, but all I know is you can make a mold of a mold and have doubled the image. Okay, I just wanted to recap because I, I watched the video that I just shot and I just want to be clear. The original mold, hard mold and rubber, we started with this, we released it. We made this first one into this, and then we made the hard mold on top of it, so we had our sandwich. Then I took it all apart, and I put this aside. I got it out of the way, and this was laying here, and then I released this, and I rubbered that, and then hard molded it. So, three molds are sitting here on the table. Each, each of them are usable to cast panels, and two of them, I think uh, this one and this one, make the same image. This one makes a different image, but they all came from the original mold. In the case of these other four, you're not seeing the original mold there. The original mold was used to make the first mold that's underlying. And then once that was done, I took the original mold out of the equation, and now you're just seeing the two new molds. Two new molds, two new molds, two new molds, two molds. These molds are sitting right here. The rubber's right there on the floor, and the hard molds are up against the wall. I removed all of these original, the molds that were original, old, original, and I made the two new molds here, two new molds, two new molds, two new molds, just so you understand. So, if you've liked my video, please like and share it and subscribe to my channel. And I so do much appreciate you watching my videos. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.